नमस्कार मैं जीत और आप देख रहे हैं डू पॉलिटिक्स आज हमारे साथ एक गेस्ट हैं टी आर रमेश जी जिन्होंने लगभग पंद्रह सालों से टेंपल लिबरेशन यानी हम जो मंदिरों की मुक्ति की बात करते हैं गवर्नमेंट के कंट्रोल से उस पर लगातार पटिशन्स केसेज फाइल किए हैं लड़े हैं इनके साथ जो भी इनके अनुभव रहे हैं उन पर तो हम बात करेंगे ही मूल मुद्दा होगा कि कैसे सरकारों के नियंत्रण से और उनके रेगुलेशन से दोनों दो अलग अलग चीज़ें हैं रेगुलेशन और कंट्रोल उसके कारण हिंदू मंदिरों की और हिंदू जो श्रद्धालु हैं उनको कितनी क्षति पहुंच रही है उनका कितना न सिर्फ फाइनेंशियल आर्थिक नुकसान हो रहा है बल्कि धार्मिक नुकसान उसके क्या एस्पेक्ट्स हैं कि लाखों एकड़ जमीनें एक एक बड़े मंदिर से तमिलनाडु हो केरल हो कर्नाटक हो आंध्र प्रदेश हो मैं खास करके सदर्न इंडिया पे सरकार अत्यधिक कार्य रहा है और उधर ही मंदिर किसी तरह बचे हुए हैं जो अपने मूल स्वरूप में थे 1500 साल पहले 2000 साल पहले जो भी है तो इन्हीं मुद्दों पर अलग अलग एस्पेक्ट्स जो हैं उस पर पॉलिटिकल करप्शन हो गया मंदिरों के रेगुलेशन कैसे कुछ ऐसे कानून बना दे रही हैं सरकारें राज्य की सरकारें जो बिल्कुल ही संविधान के भी जो हमारी धार्मिक स्वतंत्रता के अधिकार हैं उसकी अवधारणा के भी विरोध में जाता है और हिंदुओं के विरोध में तो है ही अपने लोगों को कैसे फिट करना है जगहों पे हिंदुओं के मंदिरों से ऐसे लोगों को सैलरी दी जा रही है जिनका हिंदुत्व से या हिंदुओं के हित से दूर दूर तक कोई लेना देना नहीं आ, रमेश सर बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आपका नमस्कार सबसे द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वट इज दिस फ्री टेम्पल मूवमेंट uh generally when we listen about it uh we 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 think that it has to be just uh, freed from the control of the uh, government but are there multiple aspects about it definitely uh, there are multiple aspects about it uh basically prima facie the first thing you see is as far as uh, various religious institutions are concerned there seems to be different standards followed by the government in controlling or regulating or not even going near the uh, religious institutions for example if you take uh, islamic uh, religion there are laws relating to waqfs mm. which are islamic charities so government has the waqf act which uh, uh, reg- supposed to regulate the islamic charities as far as hindus are concerned each state has this hindu religious and charitable endowments act hindu religious institution control act or whatever where they not only control the hindu charity properties endowments etc they control the very place of worship itself you find government executive officers running the shows in all aspects in hindu temples whereas christian institutions are concerned there is no law regulating any um, char- christian charity or the churches so there are different yardsticks different be- benchmark and uh, different levels of control like if you take the bihar uh, hindu religious institution act it is more or less a regulating act if you take a tamil nadu or andhra uh, hindu religious uh, uh, institutions act it is a highly controlling act uh, so there are different yardsticks but the truth is hindu temples are not run as per sampradaya by devotee hindus but they are being run as per the government secular program for more than two generations that is the uh, uh, truth and this is what we want to free the hindu temples from the government control and arbitrary secular running of the temples uh, when we see temples in india uh, there is a stark divide between northern indian temples and southern indian temples yes. how have the <coughs> south indian uh, temples survived uh, general misconception uh, is that mughals never reached there and it was not demolished the way it was done in uh, northern parts of india do you uh, concur with uh, with that so demolition did happen even before the mughals the khiljis and the the delhi sultanate they came up to madurai they destroyed the temple they even ruled madurai for seven or eight decades and they did a lot of havoc but hindu kings came back in south india in a big way especially the vijayanagar kingdom and the marathas they helped 
uh, Hindu kings and Hindu rule thrive in South India in a big way. Uh, they, Mughals, while Mughals continued in North India, Vijayanagara kingdom here was powerful. The local Nayaks were powerful and um, the uh, Tuvankur kings defeated the Dutch and the uh, Muslims in uh, Northern Kerala and they established Hindu kingdoms. Not only they established Hindu kingdoms, Vijayanagara kingdom re-established the temples to their former glory by building new temples, new structures, new gopurams, temple towers, endowing lots of lands, jewels, etc., building institutions around it. Besides the kings, there were also Matadipadis who came up in the last 600 years. Saivite Matadipadis, Vaishnavite Matadipadis and um, Mats following the philosophy of Shankara. They were also responsible each for reviving many of the temples, temple related sastras and keeping the Hindu flock together. That way, uh, South India had a greater advantage than North India and the temples came back with the institutions, with the landed properties, etc. Whereas in North India, some of the main temples came back, but more to do with worship only and certain rituals. Mm -hmm. Here in South India, the temple is not just a temple, not just meant for worship or some rituals. The rituals are varied, they are wide, they are celebrations and they are followed every day and there are well laid down shastras there. Plus, these temples had a lot of institutions, Patashala, Goshala, Vaidyashala and they were providing jobs to many people. They were keeping a team of musicians, dancers, artisans, craftsmen, etc. So, temples were the hub of each village, each town and major temples contributed to the uh, fabric of Hinduism in every state. How is the uh, form of worship different in North and uh, South India? You, you were talking that uh, in North India, if I go to Kashi Vishwanath Dham, I can do the, you know, Bilpat. Yes, you can do Abhishek, you can uh, do Achana, um, of course, subject to the timings, etc. and all uh -huh. that. Even in many, most temples in North India, uh -huh. uh, the devotees carry milk with them, especially the ladies. Uh -huh. They make it a point to go there daily uh -huh. with uh, milk, with uh, bilva uh, leaves uh -huh. or flowers. And they go uh, do seva there. They they do the pujas themselves, uh, minimum pujas, and uh -huh. uh, but with a lot of devotion, a uh -huh. uh, lot of bhakti, as we should call it. Uh -huh. And the relationship between the main deity and the devotees is almost direct uh -huh. in northern temples. Uh -huh. Whereas in southern temples, the pujas are done as per agama shastras or as per. Kerala Tantric Shastras as in Kerala, uh -huh. where the uh, devotees can go and worship in large numbers, but they cannot directly partake in the rituals and pujas. Uh -huh. That is not allowed because only those who are trained in the Shastras and trained in the Vedas and trained in the tantra, uh, Tantric methods, they can do the pujas and you will see the, always there is a distance between the devotee and the deity. Uh -huh. The devotee cannot go and touch it or even they can all, only give certain offerings. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference between North India and I think. Mm -hmm. uh, in North India, I would say it's a lagu bhakti. It's an easy way of uh, mm -hmm. uh, personal uh, bhakti quantification. Not that the South Indian bhakti is uh, diminished or less, mm -hmm. but they are used to see a temple as an institution mm -hmm. and they don't want to carry out the same worship uh, method which they follow at home mm -hmm. in the temples. Mm -hmm. So, that way the worship is different between North Indian temples and South Indian temples. Does that somehow help the South Indian temples as institutions of, you know, uh, uh, conservators of art forms, crafts and uh, in fact whole village economy you to, you know, you, yes. thrive around, thrive uh, around the, the temple. Um, all the major villages used to have one Vishnu temple or one Shiva temple. In Tamil Nadu, if you see, there is besides Shiva and Vishnu temples, there are Shakti Pira, Shakti temples. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are there. Yeah. I would say today, if uh, the conversion 
mafia is finding difficult to convert hindus in tamil nadu mm-hmm. it is because of the devi bhakti that hindu women have mm-hmm. which is not found in any other religion worshiping a goddess mm-hmm. and uh, seeing her as our, our own mother mm-hmm. is something that skipping the hindu flock together and women are totally for it mm-hmm. so that way um, south indian temples have an added advantage in preserving art architecture not that north india is lagging behind but this is something that goes on daily in hindu temples mm-hmm. um, in puri jagannath uh, you, for each uh, ratha yatra festival they build a new mm-hmm. so the craftsmen are kept busy mm-hmm. in tamil nadu you see the, the chariots are 50 feet high 70 feet high and full of artwork mm-hmm. and uh, uh, these things are still practiced today mm-hmm. uh, so that way there's a lot of activism around temples mm-hmm. uh, now you just touched upon uh, jagannath puri temple and mm. uh, in a very uh, sad state of affairs we have seen in last two years uh, the uh, 17 very very old mathas were demolished complete disregard for ancient monuments act a uh, placeage of worship act and uh, land acquisition act by yes. the uh, toilets were co- constructed uh, in the places of you know uh, the mats that were built by guru nanak and uh, it was very sad yeah. so uh, please uh, comment on this aspect of governments uh, trying to you know demolish the whole faith uh, in the garb of beautification or saundaryakaran projects as they say see the, um, very sad to see government be it ayodhya be it puri they are keeping away the sampradayas away from the temple mm-hmm. the temples primarily belong to sampradayas now in 1987 our parliament adopted the hindi version of the constitution mm-hmm. till then we were using only angrezi mm-hmm. constitution the hindi version was translated as early as 1949 mm-hmm. under the leadership of rajendra dr rajendra prasad but mm-hmm. it was never put into force Uh, maybe when nehru was there it was did not see the light of the day mm-hmm. um, one important uh, fundamental right is the right given under article 26 to denominations mm-hmm. all along we were saying denominations and court was referring to a 1897 definition of a, a denomination mm-hmm. a church oriented definition from oxford dictionary mm-hmm. whereas the hindi version says instead of religious denominations it says dharmik sampradaya hmm. which is the correct thing we are not to go by the western definition of a denomination hmm. and the see uh, and most mostly is a church oriented definition because you have presbyterian church you have seventh day adventists you have protestant within protestants you have so many things you have pentecostal you have catholic so all these denominations they were fighting among each other and they had a person belonging to one denomination will not go to uh, church of the another denomination and all that whereas in our hindu sampradaya vaishnavite will go to shiva temple Bilkul. and vice versa mm-hmm. uh, vaishnavite will welcome a shaiva acharya to his house and he will feel greatly blessed and honored mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. the acharya deigns to come to his house he mm-hmm. will celebrate it we are a inclusive uh, religion mm-hmm. so the sampradaya sought to be respected first now in puri there is a mr mat mm-hmm. mr is mahant ramanuj das mat mm-hmm. the mat is at least 800 years old mm-hmm. at least 8 centuries old now how can you call a 800 year old mat as an encroacher and how can you go and uh, demolish the mat and then the, the mr uh, mat also had a fabulous library Mm, they started the demolition with the demolition of library mm, horrible thing library to see in the, 21st mm. century after surviving all these um, mogal onslaughts and all that the secular government has gone and destroyed this thing it's very very sad state of affairs in puri and puri the streets were already wide the widest mm-hmm. among any holy cities yes sir there was no need to widen them further who is going to benefit now now thousands of poor devotees used to come to Uh, puri stay in these mats mm-hmm. just lie down on the floors and uh, go have darshan and these all these mats had chulas which are basically the stoves mm-hmm. 
from where Mahaprasad was cooked. Mm -hmm. And Mahaprasad is the most important ritual in Puri. Mm -hmm. So these mats had 50 chulas or 30 chulas or 100 chulas. And from there they made this prasad with great devotion and bhakti offering. And they used to bring the entire prasad to the temple. temple. Offer mm -hmm. it before Bhagawan, Jagannath. Mm -hmm. And then take it and distribute it. Now, if you want to destroy a heritage, if you want to destroy a ancient practice, if you want to destroy a dharma, you start by destroying the place where the dharma is happening. That mm. is what happened in Puri. And this happened when the NDA government is in the center. And this is a very sad state of affairs. Mm. How would you see uh, the government's response toward this free uh, temples movement? Well, I can uh, answer for two or three governments' mm -hmm. uh, response. In a sense, I filed a case uh, in Kerala as soon as the judgment in Sabarimala matter came. Mm -hmm. The Kerala police under the direction of the communist government were beating up um, Ayapa devotees in uh, Sabarimala for even chanting the Lord's name. Mm -hmm. And they were putting too many restrictions on the devotees. The constitution gives us a right to profess, practice and propagate. So the government control of the temples, they totally control the practice of the religion. Let's forget propagation for a minute. Mm -hmm. The propagation is allowed only to missionary people mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. Without wealth and without institutions, you cannot propagate. Mm -hmm. That is what the government control of temples is doing. Now, 2012, Pooja Swami Dayanand Sarswadi filed a case uh, against the provisions of the Tamil Nadu Hindu Religious Endowments Act, Andhra Pradesh Hindu Religious Institutions Act, and Pondicherry Hindu Religious Institutions Act. The governments did not even file a response for two, three years. And they are denying that Hindus have constitutional rights and under the Constitution of India that they can administer their own institutions. They are saying no. Hindu kings were administering temples, so we, are, we have the right to okay. administer temples. The truth is, Hindu kings never administered temples. Mm -hmm. The temple administration was always left with the local communities. Every king who built a temple before the consecration day, he has to do a ritual. Mm -hmm. He has to uh, take uh, holy water in a sankalp, hand, sankalp mm -hmm. chants, mantras, which have the effect of saying, by Bhagwan's grace, I have built this temple. This temple now belongs to this community. Mm -hmm. And this, I beg this community to take care of this temple till the time of Chandra and Surya. Mm -hmm. And whoever does the seva, their feet are on my head. Mm -hmm. That's what the king says. Mm -hmm. The king intervened only when there was mismanagement or some corrections need to be made. Mm -hmm. So the, the kings never administer the temple. Even kings like Rajaraja Chola, emperor, Mm. He had his own endowments and there were officers to look after those endowments, but mm. he did not control the temple. Mm -hmm. So that story is first false. Second, now we are going by the constitution of India. And the constitution of India's fundamental rights, religious rights given under Article 25 and given, a, given as group rights under Article 26 is common for all. It's, it's the same for Hindus, it's the same for Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Jains, everybody. But you would see government controlling Hindu institutions and Jain institutions. Why is this disparity? Why is this discrimination? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> many judgments have come which say, okay, you can take over the management of an institution if there is mismanagement. After taking over, you correct the mismanagement and hand it over back. Mm -hmm. This happens vis-a-vis -vis banks. We see RBI taking over certain banks, when they're in doing crisis. the corrections. Mm -hmm. And if it is not possible to completely correct, they merge it with another bank, they make it, they keep it alive and they get out. Mm -hmm. Even cooperative societies, they put an administrative officer, make the corrections and they get out. Mm -hmm. And these cooperative societies act in different states. They have a limited period, six months, one year. Company law board appoints directors to companies which need to be corrected where mismanagement is there. Mm -hmm. But once the mismanagement is corrected, they come out. Whereas in a religious institution, it is not even commercial, it's a religious institution. Government comes, 
without stating why they have come, without stating the recording the instances of mismanagement. And then they stay put. They uh -huh. never leave. Uh -huh. uh, uh, let's talk about temple properties now and mm. how uh, regulation is different from control and how different governments are uh, exercising uh, their rights. If you take Tamil Nadu Act, there is a section 23. Which gives the which gives powers to the commissioner of the H R N C Act to oversee temple management. Now, what does that section says? The commissioner is given power to ensure that the due income is collected from the properties of the temples. That is part A. Mm -hmm. Part B says, and the collected income is utilized only for the purposes for which the temple is established or being run. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two aspects to this. Suppose the temple has 100 acres. This 50 acres is in this agricultural land and this 50 acres is semi-urban lands. This 10 acres is in the commercial viabilities there. Mm. Then the commissioner should see the land is getting, let's say, 10,000 to 15,000 rupees lease per annum. Mm -hmm. This semi-urban is getting about 1 rupee per square foot. The commercially uh, viable properties in prime areas, uh -huh. they are getting a really fair income, uh -huh. which will bring crores of rupees to the temple. Uh -huh. Now, have, making ensuring that the leases are in place, it is given to proper people with financial viability and honesty. Once the money is collected, what are the trustees doing? Are they doing utilizing it for the temple purposes? Are they utilizing it for the Hindu purposes? Are they utilizing it for the charities which the temple used to run? These are the only aspects of regulation. Hmm. Whereas control is, I put my officer there, who will list, not listen to any trustee, who will not listen to Hindu devotees, who will listen only to the commissioner, and the commissioner will listen only to the minister, mm -hmm. and the minister will listen only to the chief minister. Mm -hmm. And the act says, do ABC things, I will make my own rules, I will do XYZ things which are not a thing. Like, for example, in the Tamil Nadu Act, the executive officer can be given powers only relating to the properties of the temple. Uh -huh. But if you see every executive officer appointment, he will be in charge of the pujas, he will be in charge of the employees of the temple, he will be the one who files cases or on whom cases can be filed. Mm -hmm. These are powers non-existent for the executive officer. But government has taken it. So, government makes the temple an extension of the government. It makes the temple Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam is a department of Andhra Pradesh government. Mm -hmm. It is not a Hindu temple. It is an extension of the government of Andhra Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So, Rameshwaram temple is an extension of the government of Tamil Nadu. Madurai Meenachi Sundaresara temple is just another government department. You will not find the uh, real profession of uh, Hindu religion, the real practice of Hindu religion. Propagation is absolutely zero. And tomorrow, Meenachi Sundaresa temple claims the 3,000 rupee, 3,000 acre forest area. The executive officer will say, no, no, this is, uh, it belongs to government. It doesn't belong to the temple. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so. 18,000 acres were there in forest for a temple called Aragar Koil Temple near Madurai. Uh -huh. Government executive officer said this land belongs to the government and court ruled accordingly. The temple money is used to buy Innova cars for the minister of HRNC, the human, Hindu religious charitable endowments minister. He takes money from Kapalishwar temple in Chennai to buy one Innova car. Then he buys a second Innova car. The reason is his secretary needs one car. Is that why Hindu devotees go put money in the hundis? Uh -huh. Whereas they are not running any Agama Padashalas, they are not running Veda Padashalas. If 10 crore income comes, it goes mostly on secular purposes. Uh, what will be a conservative estimate of money that is being generated by the temples? And what is the actual on paper income that is being shown, uh, let's say for Tamil Nadu? That's a very uh, tough question. Because, number one, thanks to RTI, we are able to get, get some uh, income. But again, the details are on paper. Mm -hmm. 
there are instances of videos coming where the executive officers puts a kerchief on the uh, hundi money 500 rupee bundle and mm -hmm. 1000 rupee note bundle the hundi money so we do not know if the real hundi money is being accounted or not uh, then there are many temple lands which on paper if you see they are given out at very very meager thing like there's a temple in trichy, trichy rockfort temple mm -hmm. the temple there is 1500 years old it's got about 1000 acres of land the average uh, lease amount for each acre is about 4.5 rupees this is ridiculous in this 21st century surely the money that the lease holder is paying the executive officer directly mm. is not being accounted by the temple mm. so we do not know what exactly is it but if you take the land holdings of temples 4 lakh 78000 acres of agricultural lands in tamil nadu 29 crore square feet of sites you know the sites are found within the village or within the town or within the cities they are not like agricultural lands which is outside the village mm -hmm. they are property situated within the like in chennai there is a very very prime area called boat club road mm -hmm. in boat club road kapalisha temple has got 305 grounds of land one ground is 2400 uh, square feet mm -hmm. now the government fixed rental for that one ground is 3 lakh rupees mm -hmm. per month the 305 grounds belonging to kapalisha temple when i ask under rti how much rent is coming they are citing only one lease agreement which is providing 3000 rupees per month so 3 lakh rupees per ground per month into 300 grounds into 12 goes into crores of rupees whereas government says we are collecting 3000 rupees per month so what this exactly does is this completely handicaps the ability of hindu devotees to run institutions and to start institutions to provide for jobs to provide for education to provide for health care that is become impossible by the poor collection uh, in my opinion about 6000 to 6500 crores is the fair income that needs to be collected from the properties of tamil nadu temples a similar income should come in the undivided andhra pradesh there are a lot of lands in karnataka also in kerala the lands have been taken over by the kerala government which is not paying the annuity at the current rates and they are not paid annuity for many decades now mm -hmm. so in kerala alone about 25000 crore rupees is pending towards temples mm -hmm. andhra pradesh and tamil nadu temples would have lost each 50000 crore rupees in the last 30 years hitting on the same point of uh, uh, government corruption in a way let's talk about ratna bhandars or the treasures of of different temples and uh, i know for sure that there is nothing left in odisha's uh, odisha's uh, puri mandir's ratna bhandar then they have the the guys have claimed that we have lost the key mm. and uh, i'm sure that uh, similar reasons will be uh, given in other temples of southern india as well how this mismanagement is you know happening and going on for ever and ever and do you think that in some ways british governments who used to do audits of these temples mm. were ensuring that the riches of the temples remain uh, uh, there itself and somehow we uh, the secular hindus or secular hindu governments have you know plundered or looted it away See, basically the value system during the british rule was much better you have to accept that mm -hmm. second the british officers did not interfere in the temples except in the way of regulation and maintenance of records when a temple is taken over under the tamil nadu act or under the andhra act or whatever they first have to prepare a property register the property register will have the details of the jewels the description of the jewels the number of vessels whether the vessels are in gold or in silver or brass or copper or whatever and how many trees are there in the temple or in the temple properties 
are there any paintings any murals to which uh, sampradaya the temple belongs everything will be recorded in this mm -hmm. uh, property register now the truth is if you go to a temple where government has been administering the temple for say 60 years or 70 years like the Pani temple like the madurai temple or the tirumala tirupati temple the original property registers are missing they say there has become withered the papers are crumbled so we are making a new property register mm -hmm. but who checks the proper carryover mm -hmm. of the records the new properties and then if a property is the name of subramanya swami that is lord karthik mm -hmm. they will slowly change it to subramanya mm -hmm. then they will change it to subramanian a man who is there the patta will be changed in his name and within a matter of uh, 10 years or 15 years the uh, temple land would have become a private property mm -hmm. so these are the kinds of frauds that have evolved over 30 40 years but we can still recover many of the immovable properties but visa v uh, antique jewels gold vessels etc unless we have a proper record of these uh, things i'm as a kid i have seen silver vessels being used in major temples or even in medium sized temples mm -hmm. in my hometown and other places now they are using plastic mm -hmm. not even stainless steel vessels mm -hmm. no brass vessels so where have they gone and how can they uh, disappear without the temple staff knowing the priest knowing but this is the stage we have arrived at because in Tamil Nadu, in Andhra, including Tirupati, in Kerala, in Karnataka, there is no external audit for mm. temples. The government uses its own missionary to audit its own work. And you would be surprised to learn in Tamil Nadu, audit objections are pending resolution from 1986. And the number of audit objections spending is 1.5 million. Wow. A mind-boggling figure. Mm -hmm. The courts do not seem to take cognizance of these SOMO2. They are taking a lot of newspaper reports mm -hmm. of SOMO2. The courts themselves are filing cases. But the great Hindu temple loot <laughs> has not attracted the attention of courts across India. Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh, you uh, we were talking about uh, the taxation uh, system that mm. is put on uh, by the governments on these temples twenty percent by one uh, state and fourteen percent by other and yes. you also said that COVID exposed uh, exactly COVID exposed the uh, financial uh, uh, stability or the lack mm. of stability in mm. Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam. Mm -hmm. Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanam we all know is the richest temple in terms of income across the world. Mm -hmm. Now, they were getting about 3,500 crore rupees per annum. During the COVID time, when Devotees. the whole nation was put on a lockdown, mm -hmm. and there was no movement, the temples were closed, and no devotees were coming forward, and people did not have income also. The hundi income became almost zero in Tirumala Tirupati. And suddenly, you see an announcement coming from Tirupati Temple. Because of the COVID situation, they want to sell a few of the immovable properties and houses that were endowed to the temple. To pay salaries, they have to sell properties. This is a very shocking situation. Then, people like me, when they made some research, we realized that the salary bill of the total income of TTD, Tirumala Tirupati Devasthana, is about 40% of the total income. Now, you take any charitable organization, the first and foremost thing that will be watched is whether the administrative expenses, including salaries, is kept at a minimum level. Because a charity fund is for charity. Is for charity. The maximum amount should be spent for charity and you do it through people who do voluntary service or who do take minimum salary, uh, uh, a skeleton staff 
who work over time and with devotion and with dedication. Then I realized in the last 10 years, Thirumala Tirupati's uh, staff appointments had doubled and they are being paid government salaries. A clerk in um, Thirumala temple is getting the same salary as a clerk in government. And uh, there are too many clerks, too many officers. Uh -huh. Then when you make uh, all this research and find out why are, why is the salary bill gone up so much, then you realize that the politicians and the babus have kept on appointing people in Thirumala Tirupati so that they could get capital gains. For each appointment would mean they are getting a lot of money. Uh -huh. All at the cost of the temple, all at the cost of the hundi money coming to the temple which is supposed to be spent for Hindu purposes, Hindu charitable purposes. Yes, the Thirumala Tirupati Devasthanam runs hospital, it runs Goshala, it runs a university. All that is fine. But what is the percentage turnover, uh, changeover in the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. A comparative study has to be made. And why is this exp administrative expenses gone up? That is one thing. Now you take the other temples in Andhra, and if the temple gets more than one crore rupee or something like that, the Andhra government charges 21.5% of the total income as contribution to the government. Administrative fees, audit fees and compulsory contribution. In Tamil Nadu, 12% is the administrative fee. 4% is the audit fee. Nowhere in the world, audit companies charge 4% as the total income. And the audit is not external. The audit is not done by charter opponents. Mm -hmm. So it's only an internal audit. And they charge 4% of the temple income. Karnataka, the administrative fee is 10%. So these are taxation on Hindus. Mm -hmm. You are a Hindu, you go put 100 rupees in the Andhra temple, you lose 21 rupees 50 paise to the government immediately. You put it in a Tamil Nadu temple, 16 rupees goes to the government straight away. This is a definite taxation. Mm -hmm. This is like jisya mm -hmm. on Hindus. Mm -hmm. uh, you are also uh, talking about how Hindu temples money is being spent on secular creation of secular institutions. If you take the HRNC Act, the main purpose of the Act is to ensure that the due income of the temples are collected and the income is utilized only for the temple purposes. Now, if a temple has surplus funds, it can be used for certain dharmic purposes. This was the access. Hmm. You can start Veda Padashala. You can start Agama Padashala. You can uh, start schools for devotional singing. Mm -hmm. you, you, we have this persons who specialize in that, singing devotional songs. They are hmm. called Oduvars and all. You can start such schools. You can start an orphanage. You can start a Vaidya Shala. There are so many Dharmic avenues given on how to spend the surplus funds of a temple. Mm. But the surplus funds, how to be spent, will be decided by Hindu trustees. After following a procedure, mm. they have to write to the commissioner saying, X amount is the surplus. Out of the X amount, we want to spend Y amount for building an orphanage. Then the commissioner will publish this proposal in a newspaper and call for objections and suggestions. Mm. So Hindu devotees can, who are interested in the temple can make such objections and uh, suggestions. The commissioner will go through it, conduct an inquiry and then give the approval with some conditions or alterations, etc. Especially after this DMK government coming into power in 2021, they have started giving tenders for commercial complexes, shopping complexes. One temple land has been given for building a fish market. Now this will be shocking for every devotee Hindu. Mm -hmm. Even though most of the Hindus are non-vegetarians, they associate temples with pious purposes, Satvik. Satvik purposes. Mm -hmm. They start building wedding halls. You know, this wedding halls, commercial complexes, shopping complexes, they all give powers to the babus and the politicians. Plus, the normal kickback in commercial construction is 30%. Mm -hmm. This DMK government is depleting the funds accumulated over years in temples. Mm -hmm. So secular purposes. Now they started four secular colleges using temple money. I have filed a case against that. 
they wanted to start another further six colleges. I got a stay order against that. The first college is in the constituency of Chief Minister Stalin. The second college is in the constituency of Kanimori, uh, who is the sister of the uh, Chief Minister. Now, the distance between the temple from which money uh, is taken for this college and, the, uh, and this uh, Kanimori's constituency where the college is coming up is about 90 kilometers. Oh. If a temple wanted to start a college, it will start in, locality, in the same locality vicinity. Yeah. and with mainstream Hindu subjects. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can teach computers, you can teach other subjects, but with Hindu values. That's mm -hmm. what the act says. Mm -hmm. But they are starting secular colleges, BA, BCom, etc. and all that. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of colleges across Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. which is the job of the government. Mm -hmm. So, uh, secular purposes, government purposes, like in Pioneer Temple, a 30 crore water treatment plant has been started for this town using temple money. Three and a half crores was spent on improving the bus stand facilities in Pioneer, saying that the uh, this is a temple town and uh, only devotees are coming in this bus stand. Mm -hmm. As if they are not charging other taxes. Other taxes. Mm -hmm. So, is. secular purposes, the money is being used, temple money, mm -hmm. and it is being used without following the procedure under the Act. And these are criminal offences. Mm -hmm. They are chargeable up to life imprisonment under Section 409 of the Indian Penal Code. Mm -hmm. What is the actual meaning of uh, the word secular uh, in terms of uh, when state becomes secular normally they say that state has to uh, you know be detached from all religious activities uh, but when we uh, see this in uh, with regards mm -hmm. to temple and mosques and churches and all we, we see a clear uh, alienation of uh, hindu properties or hindu temples uh, how how would you define uh, uh, the word secular See, secular means not religious. There is a separation of the religious institution and the government. Now, secular also means the law is the same for the Hindus, the uh, Muslims, the Christians, the Sikhs, etc., etc. Now, if the law is the same, why only Hindu temples are administered by... If you say, I am doing good by administering Hindu temples, mm -hmm. why are you not doing the same good? by taking over mosques or churches, hmm. surely there is a discrimination. Secular would show that government is not leaning towards any religion or favoring any religion. Mm -hmm. This is what secular means across the world. Mm -hmm. Whereas in India, secular means anti-Hindu mm -hmm. or against Hinduism. When it comes to uh, Hindu temples, they will say, do this, do that, do that. When it comes to other religious institutions, they will say we will not interfere because we are a secular government. Uh -huh. If you are a secular government, don't interfere in Hindu institutions also. Secular is a bad word for Christians in the USA. Whereas here, they want to cling on to the word secular. Uh -huh. Whenever any problem rises in church administration or in conversion or whatever thing, they say this is a secular nation, we are uh -huh. free to do what we want. Uh -huh. It is very biased. Uh -huh. A follow-up question uh, on that only. Uh, the cases of Shani Singhnapur or, or maybe Sabri Mala, mm. the verdict uh, came and what it meant was that uh, temples are almost like tourist places devoid of any, uh, you know, dharmic connections in the eyes of law. The, the statements made by the judges meant uh, that only. The Sabri Mala judgment has to go. The Shani Singhnapur incident, in my opinion, was a dry run for Sabrimala. Mm -hmm. Shani Singhnapur uh, was not so famous like the Sabrimala temple. It did not have the same amount of footfall like Sabrimala, not even a percentage of it. Mm -hmm. But they, I think, who were behind this uh, idea of uh, making Sabrimala gender equal, mm -hmm. did a dry run in Shani Singhnapur. When they saw there was no great reaction there, they estimated it will be the same uh -huh. in Kerala. But in Kerala, it is the women folk, Hindu women, uh -huh. who stepped out first, uh -huh. opposing this so-called uh, 
reform by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court judgment, in my humble opinion, is flawed in many respects. Unfortunately, the review that was supposed to happen could not take place due to COVID and other reasons. In the first place, um, their definition of uh, denomination, as I said, mm. is clinging on to 1954 de uh, definition of denomination by the Supreme Court with regard to a mat, mm. religious mat, not mm. regarding to a temple. And they have not taken into account the 1987 adoption of Hindi version of the constitution mm -hmm. by which Pratyek Dharmik Sampradaya ya Kisi Anubhag, they will all have the protection of Article 26. Now, if you go to a tribal temple and you want to offer worship there, you can offer worship there if the tribals allow you in, inside the temple. The worship you cannot partake, you can worship there, but you cannot say, okay, you tribals don't know how to do worship. This is how we do in our temples. Let me teach you. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, you do as you want, but I will do as I do in other temples. Mm -hmm. You can't say that. Mm -hmm. Now, the tribals have their own sampradaya and they will follow it. All sampradayas, all denominations, whether Muslims, Christians, Hindus, they are subject only to public order, morality and health. Now, public order is like, if I have to give an example, there is a temple festival that happens every year. Suddenly, there are two groups. Start fighting. Start fighting. And because of that, law and order is affected. The district magistrate can say, I am I'm staying the festival for this year. Otherwise, law and order will be. He has the right to do that. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the uh, mosque or with the church or whatever. And uh, morality, you can't say this is my religion, do something against general morality. Mm -hmm. the, fiction, the constitution morality is a fiction. Mm -hmm. Morality is what we know over centuries, mm -hmm. over orderly behavior of the society, etc. etc. Then health, we saw that in during COVID, COVID. times. Mm. Mosques had to be closed, churches had to be closed, temples, temples had to be closed. We can't say we used to do worship daily. Yes, you used to do worship daily, but we cannot keep any places where people come together open. Mm -hmm. Apart from public order, morality and health, government has no business, no powers to interfere in any place of worship, but they interfere in Hindu places of worship only. This mm -hmm. is what is happening in India. We not only need to free our temples from government controls, we also have to free our own mindset mm -hmm. that government can do anything in our temple as they like. Mm -hmm. No, it is not. Mm -hmm. If they cannot do ABC things in mass or churches, they cannot do the same thing in our temples. Mm -hmm. So people also have to learn that this is our temples, our sampradaya, our rituals. We are not affecting any law and order situation. We are not affecting morality or health. Mm -hmm. So we should be continuing to do our dharma. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, when we uh, see temple uh, of a deity, we we see it as his home and he has the right to permission or denial who can come in my house and who cannot yes Lord so Ayapa, that's why hmm. uh, advocate sai deepak when he argued in the sabarimala case he said it is my temple my rules hmm. see there are five famous ayapa temples in sabarimala in kerala four temples there is no bar in going mm -hmm. in going any time of the year women can go, we can go as a family, like you go to other temples. Mm -hmm. There are certain restrictions mm -hmm. which every temple has, timings, order of dress, etc. But in Shabarimala, it is known as a Kavu temple, that means forest temple. Mm -hmm. It is not open throughout the year, it is open for a few days in a month mm -hmm. and during uh, the Mandala Puja, which is 45 days and during Magara Puja for another 20 days. It is not a temple meant for regular worship. People have to do a penance for a period. They have to observe Vrat. Sabarimala is not a regular temple. It's a forest temple. It became very famous. It is getting lakhs of visitors. That doesn't change the religious character of the temple. You have to observe Vrat. The Sabarimala deity is a Brahmachari. So, Brahmach a Naishtika Brahmachari has his own rules. Mm -hmm. So, each temple, the deity is the supreme owner of the temple. Pranak Pradishta of the temple is as per the Aidika of mm. the deity. Ayappa in Sabarimala is a tapasvi who is doing tapas. He wants the devotees to come only at certain times of the uh, thing. 
and he wants only certain devotees to come. Hmm. The bar is not on all women. The bar is on the women of certain age. Hmm. And for reasons hmm. of yoga, tantra, etc. So, courts cannot assume power to decide a religious matter. Mm -hmm. Court cannot say that Shabarimala temple is no different from other Hindu temples. How can they say that? It's obvious. Mm -hmm. you, in Japan, you have a mountain where no woman is allowed. Mm -hmm. You have certain things in, across the world. And there is a temple in uh, Kerala or Orisha where women, uh, men are not men allowed. Are not. Mm -hmm. So, that is the uh, Pranapadishta Aidika of the temple. Mm -hmm. And you cannot violate that religious purpose. Uh -huh. uh, the last question is, how we can fight these kind of governments who are changing legislative uh, rules to suit mm -hmm. their own agenda? We, you were talking about three things, agitation, awareness and legalities, Legal. legal recourse. The way I am fighting is, I am creating a certain amount of awareness, which, uh, which has uh, <laughs> limited prospects. If I come to your channel, thousands of viewers are saying, if mm. I speak alone, I may get 100 viewers. Uh, awareness is something required in a big way. People should know how their temples are being taxed, how government is not interfering in other religions, and how by not collecting the due income, Hindu temples are not flourishing. They are not able to build institutions. They are not able to give free education, free health care. They provide for jobs, etc. And how our ancient structures like the AMR, Mutt in Puri are demolished without anybody even raising a murmur. So awareness is very important. But this awareness should make people ask questions. Primarily, they should start asking questions. Can a 800-year-old Mutt be declared as an uh, uh, encroachment or unnecessary? So what about the Dharma they were doing? What about the practices? As an ancient mutt, they were having. Was it harming the society? How can you put an end to a mutt? How can you realize only four rupees per acre per temple? It is ridiculous. Mm. Then you cannot do dharma. People should ask questions. People should ask their MPs and MLAs why are Hindu temples still under government control? The MPs will say it's a state subject. Okay, but why are you not raising it in the parliament? Why central government is not bringing an act? It has the powers. The uh, religious endowment subject is a concurrent subject in the con uh, constitution. That means both state and center can legislate. Why is the center not legislating? You can ask. You can ask your MPs. You can ask your MLAs. And you can tell them, I am going to vote when government is not interfering, to the government which is not interfering in Hindu temple matters. Mm -hmm or to the government which stops the looting of babus and politicians from Hindu temples, mm -hmm. to the government which ensures Thirumala Tirupati Devasthanam is run as per Sampradaya, and the bulk of the 3,500 crores are used for Hindu charitable purposes and not for administrative expenses. People should ask, starting, you know, making questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you start asking these MLAs and MPs, First, they may deflect or give evasive replies, but they cannot do it forever. Mm -hmm. In every meeting, if people start asking. And the second thing is, um, if temples get a real income, we can have our own TV uh, channels, we can have our own radio channels. Universities for that Universities. Matter. Research centers. And Gita Press. Mm -hmm. Hardwar was doing it in a big way. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you support Gita Press? You support through temple funds. Mm -hmm. You know, they were publishing our uh, uh, itihasas, shastras. shastras. Very cheap price. Very, very cheap, cheap price. price. And in beautifully printed books. Mm -hmm. They can't do it forever. They need mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. And these days, kids are holding on to phones and playing games. So, books, you have to think of other uh, ways of reaching out to mm -hmm. them. You have to inbuilt the value systems. One generation ago, children were brought up with the stories of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Now that is gone. How do you bring it back? Mm -hmm. To do Dharma, you need Artha. Mm -hmm. Without Artha, you cannot do Dharma. Mm -hmm. That's like the Grahastha. He is taking care of the children. He is taking care of the aged parents. Mm -hmm. He is taking care of the sannyasis. One person is doing and he is the Grahastha. Mm -hmm. Similarly, Artha is important for Dharma. 
and moksha hmm. ultimately yeah ultimately mm-hmm. so our temples were the hubs of our civilization the hubs of our value system we need to make them free so that they are run as per sampradayas mm-hmm. we don't want to you know go and convert people but mm-hmm. we want to protect our people from conversion mm-hmm. unless we put a fence safeguarding our flock mm-hmm. and to do all that and to keep the people aware we need artha and the art, and the artha can be got from the properties endowed by our forefathers mm. the temples have properties the temple have regular income if you go and see where is the bulk of the money of vaishnava devi is going where is the bulk of the money of siddhi vinayak temple in bombay is going you will find the shocking answers it is not used for hindu purposes mm-hmm. it is not used for propagating hindu values they are definitely not being used for bringing up hindu schools hindu colleges hindu hospitals mm-hmm. that is not being done you start doing this then you will see equal or more amount being donated to temples mm-hmm. to make them even bigger yes yes to make this dharma activities bigger mm-hmm. people once they know yes temple money is used for dharmic, dharmic purposes. hindu purposes it is helping poor hindus it is helping dharmic hindus then more money will pour into temples mm-hmm. and to do that we need to have a robust management system in temples people with management background people with uh, administrative background they should come and volunteer their services and we should keep the temple management in a very professional manner in a dharmic manner and in a very transparent manner we should account every rupee mm-hmm. we should show how if a hindu can become the ch- prime minister of uk if he can become the ceo of a multinational company cannot hindus administer their own temples mm-hmm. it's a shame that in uh, 2022 government is telling us or telling the courts that hindus cannot administer their temp- own temples mm-hmm. we should prove them wrong by sh- showing we can not only administer but can administer them beautifully and we can make dharma flourish thank you for your time sir thank you thank you for the opportunity